We're going to start with the hair wing calibatus pattern, which was a fly designed by the guys at Blue Ribbon Flies, uh, predominantly to be used on Hebgen Lake. And it's one of my favorite uh, calibatus patterns. It floats real well, it's very easy to see, and it's not too difficult to tie. There are a few tricks involved with it, uh, which I'll show you here. Um, now the hook that I'm going to use is the Tiemco 100, which is just a very standard dry fly hook, light wire, and it floats real well. Um, and then I'm going to use a uh, Rusty Dunn 8 dot thread, which matches the color of the calibatus uh, real well. Um, and what I'm going to do to start with is start the thread right towards the front of the hook. And that's where I'm going to tie in my wing. Uh, where a lot of dry flies, you end up tying the tail in first. I'm actually going to tie the wing in first here just because it uh, ends up being bulky and kind of gets in the way uh, and can be difficult to, um, to do if you've already got the tail in there. So uh, doing this wing, I'm going to use uh, some deer body hair. And this is really important to this pattern. It is uh, um, the same stuff that you would use for tying Comparadon or Sparkle Dun. But the, unlike, I guess there's a lot of misconceptions with, uh, with the deer hair. A lot of people think that coastal deer hair is what you want to use. And in fact, this is just a standard whitetail deer, but it is from uh, a deer that has not gotten its winter coat yet. It's from you know, a, an early October deer um, that was actually harvested in Idaho. And so if you look, the, uh, the hair, it's hard to see here the hair is extremely short and there's not really any under fur in here so it's real easy to work with um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my scissors in here and lift up the amount of hair that i think that i'll need which i'm getting my stuff out of the way here and i'll trim off a small bunch just like so and then i'm going to stack this got a small bunch there that i'm going to Put in the stacker. Um, and now I'll just stack this here and get all the tips lined up. And now all those tips are nice and even. And I'll grab those with my right hand because I'm going to want to have those facing forward. And if I have to transfer them from one hand to the other, it can be, it ends up uh, getting them all scrambled again. Now, with the thread about an eighth of an inch, perhaps, back from the eye of the hook, I'm going to go ahead and tie these tips in, and you'll see that they spin out just a little bit, and I'm really making sure that I do not let go of the butt ends because they'll do the same thing and make it very difficult to trim later. So I'm going to get these tied down real nicely, just like so. I'm still holding on to these butt ends. And then the key here to making a nice body, and this is the same thing if you're tying Comparadon, is trimming this in two spots. So I'm going to trim it one time immediately behind the wing, and then get my tips of my scissors underneath the hair and trim it back there like so. And now I can take my thread and wrap it loosely over top of those butt ends so that they're covered, and then I can tighten it down and make it so it's nice and neat. If I tied that real tight over those butt ends, they would stick out and make it very difficult to trim. Definitely possible, but just more work than you need to. So now I'll get that all nice and neatened up there. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and make my wing or my wings. And so first thing I'll do is I'm going to grab half of this hair and I'm going to pull it towards me. Uh, and then I'm going to wrap this thread around that wing pretty loosely just to get the wing to look exactly the way I'd like it to. If I pull real tight, I can spin it out. If I do it loosely, it'll stick together more in a bunch. Then I can grab the other hair and pull, push it away from me and do the same thing. So now I've got my two wings sticking out just like so. A little squeaky there. And I'll have a few butt ends here that I might trim off. Now <clears throat> I can move the thread to the back of the hook. And I'm going to use a <clears throat> grizzly hackle here. This is a grizzly saddle that uh, uh, just has nice long fibers. I, I want to have good long fibers when I'm tying a spinner pattern to imitate the natural. And that looks like a good one there. 
Uh, <clears throat> so I, I picked this, this particular saddle, this hackle out here just because it has very long fibers and there's no webbing in there either. So it's nice stiff fibers, they're long enough to look natural and they're gonna float real well. Uh, I don't want anything with any webbing in there because that's gonna end up uh, uh, not making nearly as good looking of a tail. So now I've got a small little bunch right here. I'm gonna get the tips lined up and then trim the butt ends off. So I've got the, the butt ends trimmed and now I'm just gonna move those to the very back of the hook and tie them in and now I've got my tail. And you can see by, uh, <clears throat> not, by trimming those butt ends, I didn't have to go in here and trim again. And so I'm just trying to eliminate uh, as much trimming as I possibly can in and around um, those wings because they're uh, pretty fragile. So now I am going to, uh, to dub the body and this is the last step in the fly. Okay, so I'm using this ultra fine uh, dry fly dubbing, which is, is optimal for to tying dry flies because it's very, very fine and it's easy to make a very narrow trim body with it. And so what I'm gonna do is just, I grab the whole bunch in my hand here and I pull off just small amounts. You can see that just, just a few fibers in my finger. And I'm now I'm going to dub it onto the hook, just very, very little. And I'll pull a little more off and I just add it as I go. And once you tie a few of these, you'll <clears throat> get an idea of how, how much you need to put on, but you can always add more. It's, this is very difficult once you put it on the thread to take it back off, so it's better to add it as you need it. So now I have a very small amount of dubbing uh, on there, and I'm going to just go ahead and try to make a very narrow, skinny body. I just move up the shank of the hook towards the wings. And I want to be sure to pack it behind the wings as much as I possibly can. And then I'm going to grab my fingers, or grab the wings with my fingers, and pull them back a little bit, and wrap directly in behind or in front of them, and make a little head. And now I'm basically done. Now those wings are off to the side a little bit, and I can straighten those back up. And I'll whip finish it. And we're done. Now I can go in there if I need to, if there's any hairs that are sticking out, kind of weird places, and trim those out of the way. Okay, so you can see now with the finished fly that I've, the wings are not exactly flat out to the side. Now, a typical spinner pattern, the natural insect wings are going to be flat out to the sides. But what this will do if I have the, the wings angled up a little bit is that it's gonna make this fly float a little bit better and it's also gonna make these wings quite a bit easier to see, which is really, really important. So it'll work just fine if the wings are out flat, but I definitely would recommend to try to get them so they're cocked up a little bit. And that is the end of the pattern right there.